today in this first reading he was in the wine press trying to make wheat you're not supposed to make wheat in the wine press he was there because the wine press is basically like a hidden place it's a it's a place where you would not be seen he was hiding from the Midianites who were an imposing army and so we read automatically at the beginning of this story that Gideon was not a very courageous man and all throughout the story of Gideon, we see that he struggles. Uh, and sometimes he tears down altars to Baal, right, the pagan deity. And other times he finds himself succumbing to pagan rituals. Uh, Gideon, even though God gives him victory in various battles, Gideon still doubts. And he asks for signs, like the sign he asked for this morning. And then also another sign is the, the sign of Gideon's fleece, which you might be familiar with the the Gideon's fleece sign. Basically, he tells God, he says, if you prove to me that you're going to give me victory in battle, I'm going to lay my fleece on the ground, and overnight, I ask that you make it so that when I wake up in the morning, the fleece is completely dry, while all the, round, all the ground around it is wet. And God does the sign, and Gideon still doesn't believe it, so the next day he does the opposite. He says, now I want you to make the fleece wet and the ground dry. And so we see the doubtfulness of Gideon. Uh, Gideon is also the man who, when he went into battle against the Midianites, there were 3,000 men who gathered to fight with him, and God thought that that was too many. And so he made Gideon send the majority of them away, and Gideon only ended up with 300 men for the battle. When they went down to the camp of the Midianites, 
Instead of attacking them, they all blew trumpets and held their torches, and they seemed like a huge and vast army, so the Midianites fled without even fighting. So there's many uh, colorful stories about the story of Gideon. One of the most striking things about this story of Gideon is that not only does Gideon doubt, not only is he not courageous, but he doubts God's ability to use him. He says, Lord, how can I save Israel? My family is the lowliest in Manasseh, and I am the most insignificant of my father's house. And God responded, I will be with you. It's as simple as that. Many of us, we doubt God's ability to use us or to send us on mission. I've been trying to recruit catechists these last couple weeks for youth ministry religious education. And the first response I get is, oh, I don't know, Father. I don't know if I know enough. We're constantly doubting our ability for God to use us. Or you and I both know that throughout the day when you see opportunities to bring up the faith and to evangelize, oftentimes it's hard for us to take that extra step. It's important to remember what matters. God will be with you. I will be with you. That's all that really matters when we're trying to evangelize or pass on the faith. Remembering that God is with us. And if he is with us, then his will will be accomplished through our work. So it's a great word of peace to Gideon and to us.